Personal safety is important for everyone. It is especially important for women. What if some of our everyday habits were actually compromising our safety and putting us more at risk? We know victims aren't to blame for tragic assaults and kidnappings, but don't you want to make sure you're doing everything in your power to stay safe? Awareness is your first line of defense. The first and probably most important component in self-defense is awareness. Awareness of yourself, your surroundings, and your potential attacker's likely strategies. The criminal's primary strategy is to use the advantage of surprise. A lot of people think that being on the phone is safe because the person you are talking to can call 911, but that rarely works out. Chatting can distract you. It's better to be aware of your surroundings. Instead, hold your cell phone and be ready to make an emergency call. Many phones now have a button on the screen to call 911 immediately. Go one step further and preset one of the buttons on your phone to call the emergency number. Some call it a sixth sense. Others call it a gut instinct. Whatever you call it, your intuition is a powerful subconscious insight into situations and people. All of us, especially women, have this gift, but very few of us pay attention to it. Learn to trust this power and to use it to your full advantage. Avoid a person or situation which does not feel safe. You're probably right. If possible, escape is always your best option. But what if the unthinkable happens? You are suddenly confronted by a predator who demands that you go with him, be it in a car, or into an alley, or a building. You are far more likely to be killed or seriously injured if you go with the predator than if you run away. Run away, yell for help, do whatever you can to attract attention. And if the criminal is after your purse or other material items, throw them one way while you run the other. You have the right to fight back. Unfortunately, no matter how diligently we practice awareness and avoidance techniques, we may find ourselves in a physical confrontation. Whether or not you have self-defense training, and no matter what your age or physical condition, it is important to understand that you can and should defend yourself physically. You have both the moral and legal right to do so, even if the attacker is only threatening you and hasn't struck first. Whether to fight back or not is a decision only you can make. Many women worry that they will anger the attacker and get hurt worse if they defend themselves. While there are no guarantees, statistics clearly show that your odds of survival are far greater if you do fight back. Remember though, to use the element of surprise to your advantage. Strike quickly and mean business. You may only get one chance. Never depend on any self-defense tools or weapon to stop an attacker. Trust your body and your wits, which you can always depend on in the event of an attack. If you choose to use a weapon like pepper spray, make sure you know how to operate it properly in the event of an attack. Look underneath your car before approaching it in a parking garage or lot at night. If you return to your car and see that a van is parked right next to the driver's side, enter through the passenger side. Predators often use vans and will disguise it as a family car, even using baby on board decals. Lock your doors as soon as you enter your vehicle. Take steps to protect yourself while you travel. Violent crimes against women happen in the best and worst hotels around the world. Predators may play the part of a hotel employee, push their way through an open or unlocked door, or obtain a pass key to the room. As with home safety, never open your door unless you are certain the person on the other side is legitimate and always carry a door wedge with you when you travel. A wedge is often stronger than the door it secures. Always immediately lock your hotel room door after you enter. Now when you're out for a night on the town, always pour your own drink at a party and bring it with you everywhere, even to the bathroom. This will make it a lot harder for someone to drug you via your drink. Watch the bartender as he or she pours your drink. To be extra safe, 
Drink wine instead of a cocktail. Mixed drinks take longer to make. You could be easily distracted and miss the bartender who could be working with the predator or someone else slipping something into your drink. When going out with your girlfriends, decide beforehand that you will stick together. Do not let your friend go off alone with the guy she just met. Safety in cyberspace is important too. Although the internet is educational and entertaining, it can also be full of danger if one isn't careful. When communicating online, use a nickname and always keep personal information such as home address and phone number confidential. Instruct family members to do the same. Keep current on security issues, frauds, and computer viruses. Don't check in on Foursquare or Facebook when you arrive somewhere. Instead, check in as you leave. This way no one will be able to digitally stalk you and know your every move or when you're not home. Along the same lines, avoid tweeting or Facebooking from vacation, especially if your account is public, as it's a way of letting the world know that your home is unoccupied. Many companies offer free safety apps for smartphones. Research your options and determine which one fits your needs. There are no guarantees in life and no guarantees when it comes to crime prevention. While we can't guarantee you will never be a victim, by following these tips you will greatly reduce the likelihood of being a victim and increase your chances of survival if you are picked as a criminal's next target. For more information on this or other topics, or to schedule a presenter for your next event, please contact the Bismarck Police Department at 223-1212.